Hello everyone, welcome to this grid DFS series of videos again. So this will be the last video in this series, so that is walls and gates 286. So the problem statement is saying you are given an M into N grid rooms initialized with these three possible values. Minus one is represented as a wall or an obstacle, zero means a gate, infinity means an empty room. So they will put some value in that to represent it as an infinity. Fill each empty room with the distance to its nearest gate. If it is impossible to reach a gate, it should be filled with INF or infinity. So here if you take one example, what it is saying is you will be given with one grid where minus one means one wall is present and zero means one gate is present. And infinity means that is an empty cell. What you have to do is you have to find what is the distance of this empty cell from any gate. So if you check here, they already filled it up here. So the nearest gate for this cell is this one. So that is one because the distance is one. For this cell it is one, for two, three, four, like that. From here it is one, two and three. So here if you check for this particular cell, the distance from this gate is three, but from this gate it is two. So we have to update with the minimum one. So if suppose the grid is very big and we have multiple gates and multiple walls and all that time there is possibility that a particular cell is near from a particular gate, but it is far from the other gate. So we have to update with the minimum one here. And one more scenario is if you will not able to reach any gate, then that time you have to fill it with infinity only. Suppose there is a wall here. Okay, so that time as it's a wall here, so this two cell you can't reach from any of the gate. So that time you have to update it as INF, INF. That's it. So now we'll check how to solve this problem. So now we will discuss about the approach. So we have to do a DFS search or you can use BFS also. So here in this solution, I will talk about the DFS solution. So as per the other videos, what we are doing from a particular cell, we are starting a DFS call, which will go to the fourth direction, right? Same thing we will apply here also. So we will first scan through the entire grid using to follow. And we have to first search a gate. So here if you check first cell, there is no gate here. It is not gate, but here it is a gate. Now from this gate, we have to start our DFS call to the fourth direction, left, right, top or down. Okay. And we have to update the distance. So our main goal is suppose this is one gate. Okay. From here, we have to go to left, right, top or down with the distance value as one. And if we can reach there, then I will update that cell as one because the distance from this particular gate to that cell will become one. And from one, suppose we have can go to other four direction apart from this one, because this one is already visited. There we have to carry two. And if it is possible, means there is no wall or out of boundary is there, then we have to update two in that cell and gradually we will proceed. So here in this example, if you check, I will just change the color and show you. Let's say here we can go to the fourth direction. Top direction we can't go because that is going out of the grid. Left side, it's a wall present. So right side, if you go using the DFS call, we can see one infinity is there. That means that is a greater value. So we have to update it as one. Okay. And from here, we can't go anywhere because all this call will be uh, remain here only because they are either going out of the boundary or wall is present. So here, the another DFS call which was coming from that direction. So that will update it as one. Now from this cell, now we can go to the fourth direction and possible direction is this one and this one because here wall and gate is present. Now here onwards, whatever cells are there that we have to update with two because 
from here all distance are 1 from 1 all we have to update as 2 then only gradually we can increase the distance so this two cell I have to update as 2 and 2 and from here whatever call will go that will start with 3 so if it is going this side then I have to update it as 3 and from 3 whenever in 4 direction I am going here I have to update it as 4 so this part of the DFS call is completed so we have to start again from here because here we left so from 2 whatever direction you will go we have to update it as 3 so if you remove it you have to maintain it as 3 then from 3 this two direction we can go and both we have to update as 4 and 4 and I think we are completed right so here if you look we started from here and we updated all the empty cells now from this particular gate we updated all the distance right but maybe that is not the minimum because from this gate it should be 1 right then it's a nearby but as of now as we started the DFS call from this particular gate we updated everything with this gates distance so here if you see it is 4 and it is true also because it is the 4 direction now what we have to do is we have to again search for another gate so here no gate is present till here here we found one gate so I will change the color to some different color and update accordingly now from here four direction we can go with one value because we are just starting this time what we have to do is we have to check if a present cell value is if it is greater than then the upcoming value then only we have to update so from here we are starting so we have one means we have to update it using 1 so this 1 is actually less than this 4 means the already presented value in this cell that time we have to update but if it is less then we don't have to update because that got the proper value so here we have 1 but it is 4 so we have to update it using 1 from 1 we have to propagate 2 right in 4 direction only we can propagate this side so we can propagate 2 and the value is 3 means we are minimum so we have to update it so it will be updated with 2 from here we can go to this direction and this direction and uh, this side we can't go or this side we can't uh, update the value because 2 is not less than 2 right means already it is getting the perfect value but here if we have to update with 3 right sorry it was my mistake so from 2 I have to update it with 3 but 3 is not less than 2 so we can't update here right but here in this case we have to update it using 3 but the value present is 4 that means it is less than right so we can update it so it will become 3 now we can't move anywhere else because this direction we can't go so we can't proceed with this pass and all and this will be the final value so here now we have updated everything and if you check here all the cells got their proper distance or the minimum distance from the gates and if you match it with the answer in the lit code example they provided 3 2 1 and 2 1 2 3 4 and 1 and here in this grid they have provided the direction also like uh, which cell is following which gate so all this uh, bottom word direction cells are following this gate because 1, 2, 3 is their distance and this particular gate is followed by 2 because the distance is 2 from here from here it is 1 then 1, 2, 3 and 4 ok now we will see the code ok so coming to the coding part here I have taken this method which was already provided so there first we are defining this row and column as a global variable to pass into the recursion call and then uh, first we have to find the gates 
okay so for that purpose we have to iterate over the whole grid and we have to find the get if we get the get actually from there we have to start our dfs calls into the fourth direction so here if you check using this two for loop i just first found the get here as it's a gate from here we have to call four direction using the coordinates like i minus one or j minus one like that and that time we have to pass one distance field so if i am going away from this gate that means all this area if they are valid then they will be one right means distance from the gate will be one so that's why i am passing one here and i am calling it four direction so here if you check left side it can't go right side it will go uh, bottom it will go and top it can't go so that condition i put here in the dfs call that if it is going out of the bound or out of the cell then we have to stop there or else if the uh, cell value is minus one that means wall is present that direction will not go and after some time if we again get zero means we will get another gate so that also will not go right so if all these things are valid then we will check that if the distance or the new one is less than the previously calculated distance or not so suppose from here when we are starting initially everything will be infinite right so and i am assuming that the distance will be one so by this condition i can check that my distance is one and the this cell has the distance as infinity that means we can update it so it will become one let's say we are here and one gate is present here so that time this is cl more close to this gate and should be one right so if it is already calculated that time when i am started calculating from this gate we don't have to update that one right so if my distance which I am going to update is uh, less than the already distance, then only we have to update it as room ij equal to this. And then again, we have to go towards fourth direction. Okay, so from there, we have to again call the DFS in the fourth direction. That's it, the simple approach. So after submitting, yeah, it's working. Thanks for watching. <laughs>